Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to answer a question that's been bugging me for a long time. Why do people buy Volkswagens? In this case, a Passat. Now this is a 2012 Passat, but it goes for any of them. The prices are going to be for 2012. Back in 2012, you could have got a Toyota Camry for about $1,000 more. So you'd save a grand buying this Passat. But the Passat has about 25 less horsepower. And I can guarantee you, this thing's going to cost 10 times the repair of anything you'll have to do on the Camry. For example, the wipers are broken on this vehicle. And as you can see, this thing's only got 45,000 miles on it. The dealers say it's a bad computer module and it's going to cost $1,264 to fix the wipers. Take my old Celica. 240,000 miles. The wipers still work, and if they break, it's not going to cost that. Why on earth those wipers are broken already is beyond me. But that's typical on Volkswagens in the United States. This particular one was made down the road in Chattanooga. The German ones, I have to say, are better made. Now, the Passats they sell in Germany and Europe, for example, the late model ones, they're better built. The German model, for example, has 122 more horsepower than the American model. So they sell them all over the world. But here in the United States, it always has me scratching my head why people buy these things. But that is until I drive one. Since Volkswagen bought Porsche and Audi ages ago, they put all that high tech, fancy car technology into their lowly Volkswagens. Take the transmission. This is a DSG six speed automatic transmission. It has two clutches in it and six speeds. You can put it in automatic mode when you put it in D, or you can flip it over and it's not a standard transmission that you shift by pulling down or pushing up. This is an older one. You can see it doesn't have a paddle shifter on it. You got to shift here, but still, you can do it manually. Put it in the manual mode. There it is. As you can see, it's in first gear. One, two, we'll leave it in first gear. And this is the reason people buy these cars. We're going to take off. First, we'll straighten the car. We're going to take off. They got plenty of zip. Shift pretty smooth when you shift them manually, too. They corner like a dream. These things have no problem steering through the twisties, none whatsoever. No understeer, no oversteer. They are great driving cars. There's no lying about that. They're fun to drive and that's what sells them. The problem is they're not fun to fix when they break. These DSG six speeds, when they break down and they do break down, they can cost six, seven, eight thousand dollars to replace or repair. They are super expensive technology. But when these transmissions and engines are working right we'll come up here to a little stop and show you i'm not even going to use the mode of shifting myself i'm going to put it in automatic transmission mode but we're going to have it in sport which is quicker here we go this thing takes off you can feel it shifting very smoothly these are fun zippy cars to drive. That's all they sell these things. They're responsive, quick cars. But of course, since Volkswagen owns Porsche and Audi, these things have scores of computer modules. When they break, they cost a fortune to fix. As in the case of the wiper blades here, it's over 1,200 bucks to fix your stupid wiper blades on a car that's only got 45,000 miles on it. But they're so much fun to drive on twisty roads. They really are. These things are a riot to drive. They're like go-karts on steroids. I can totally comprehend why people who know nothing about cars buy a Volkswagen. They're zippy. They're fun to drive. They get great gas mods for a zippy, fun to drive car, but they cost a fortune to repair when they break, and they break down way before the time they should if you ask me. 45,000 miles, the wiper shot, that's gonna be 1,200 bucks. The dealer's trying to charge them an additional 2,164 bucks for a brake job and front end work. Even though this thing is handling like a dream, the tires aren't wearing out odd, the brakes work perfectly fine, they always oversell at Volkswagen dealers. And of course, that happens at lots of dealers, but it's especially a problem at Volkswagen because since they have all these computer modules, every time you change something, you often have to reprogram the module to fit in. Volkswagen use a very individualistic analytic system where you have to have their equipment to analyze, repair, and then reprogram them to work on their cars. And of course, don't think the Volkswagen dealers don't know that. So they just take you to the cleaners whenever work needs to be done because they know, oh, well, these other guys, they can't reprogram this module and then they just start trying to sell you the kitchen sink every single time you bring it in. Now I expected this kind of stuff in a big city like Houston but here in Tennessee I see the same thing. 
It's no different. There's still Volkswagen dealers with high-tech cars that the old Volkswagen Beetle with a simple carburetor and a standard transmission that you can fix in 10 minutes. Very easy to work on. Those days are long gone. All the Porsche Audi technology that Volkswagen bought when Volkswagen bought Porsche and Audi is now in these things. And especially true of modern Volkswagens, there's plastic crap everywhere. It's already breaking on this thing. Even with 45,000 miles. And these Passats, the ones made down the road here in Chattanooga, they're not going to be made making in the future they still not going to make anymore and they're going to stop making the Passat sedans in Europe too. Volkswagen of course is making a big push towards electric cars and all I got to say is let's hope Volkswagen does a better job with electric cars that they've done with gasoline and diesel cars when you consider this thing only has 45,000 miles on it and is having problems. Well they won't have DSG fancy expensive transmissions to break because they don't have those in electric vehicles. They won't have little bitty engines with turbochargers that end up burning oil as they age because of the pressure. They're electric motors. And maybe it'll be a completely different ball game. They do have excellent suspension systems. They can keep that on the electric cars. Great brakes, they can keep that. And they're good looking cars. So maybe they'll do a much better job with electric cars. Because they're going to be making electric cars down the road in Chattanooga where this particular gasoline car was made. And since it's a German car, let's hook up a German scan tool, Bosch, and see what's happening to the rest of the car. We use German technology to fight German technology. Well, I'm about 90% German, so I can comprehend that. It's working so far, it's connecting itself automatically. And this is the SEL, so start checking it up. Cycle the ignition. Off. On. Do what the machine says. Hey, it's a German car. You must obey. So let's do an enhanced vehicle scan. Here we go. Went through all the stuff. Whee! This will take a while because it's a Volkswagen. Realize this thing has scores of electronic modules, little baby computers. This is testing them all. It knows it as an aftermarket radio. It does. The guy even told me the other one broke. I guess the Germans can't even make a radio that lasts 45,000 miles. If you're ever going to do any kind of serious work on one of these things, you got to have at least this level Bosch scan tool. If you don't, you might as well be pissing in the wind trying to work on these things. That's one of the reasons they charge so much at Volkswagen. They know a lot of guys can't work on these things. As you can see, it's going through a whole bunch of stuff. It's only part way done. Check all these mods. It's got problems in the gateway, seat adjust, navigation, door driver, steering assist. All that stuff is computer controlled on these Volkswagens. You have to realize, modern Volkswagens, they are not your father or grandfather's Volkswagen. The old Beetle, simple. A guy with a screwdriver and a hammer can fix them. No, you are driving rolling computers on these babies. But as I said, they know how to sell them. They ride good, they're fast. This one has a killer Fender sound system in it. And of course, even that's run by computers. Man, this is taking a long time. It's been going on 10 minutes and it's still got quite a bit to go. 64 items found on OBD2. And then non-continuously ones, 34 items for that. Now it's making the report. Got eight trouble codes, 64 data items. So let's check the trouble codes first. The Central Electric says two. Bulb for data Daytime running light left. Bulb for daytime running light right. And now check it out. The Bosch scan tool just turned itself on and off. I guess the Germans can't even make good scan tools anymore to fix our cars. <laughs> this thing is only a couple months old too. So much for vaunted German technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Teutonic myth, if you ask me. At least today. So we'll switch to Innova. We'll try a different modern scan tool. When all modules scan with this. Clearly enough, this scan tool is working faster than the German one was. It shows the same codes for the running lamp bulbs. We really don't care about that. The daylight running bulbs, it's just minor stuff. I find it utterly hilarious that a Chinese made scan tool works better on this Volkswagen and faster than the German Bosch one did. Things get ironic in this business. Now granted, this Bosch stand tool would have been able to get much further into all the different modules than this Chinese made tool did, but then again, the Bosch one broke down in the middle and started itself all over again. But I do have to say, the system warned me of that. It said, having this aftermarket radio might screw everything up and make data weird. Let's face it, if you can't even change the radio in a car, and then the car won't run right, that tells me don't buy that car. Especially one where the radio broke before it had 40,000 miles on it. So what's my conclusion about why people buy these Volkswagens? Well, in this case, because they're good at fooling people. You road test one of these. They're zippy. 
they handle like a dream. You can either have an automatic DSG transmission that shifts very smoothly, or you can put it in manual mode and shift it yourself. But people who buy these, if you ask me, they're fooled. Kind of like Rodney Dangerfield saying, it fell apart like a Chinese motorcycle. They don't hold up over time, and they cost a small fortune to repair when they break down. I don't have a single customer in the last 30 years who ever bought a Volkswagen and never turned around and bought a second Volkswagen. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.